Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. A lot of things to look forward to on the programme. A one-to-one with former St Mirren chairman Stuart Gilmer giving us the inside track on, of course, uh, the big vote today, the SPFL voting on those resolutions. Rangers wanted to add a resolution. The SPFL have (coughs) kicked that out and they've released a statement. And over and above that, we've got so much to talk about, including great midfielders. We've got lots of little inside tracks on the weekend and entertainment for you, including, of course, how you can get down to 13 stone six. And Tam, I don't know if you can see the picture, but does Ruffy look fantastic there in his Scotland top in the uh, in the little box? I don't know. C- can you see that? I mean, he looks magnificent. I can see him, in yep. that, doesn't he? Yep. He looks as if he's in a gastric big... band. <laughs> <laughs> ah, big thanks! A big thanks to Jim Scullion, uh, the artist who quickly knocked that up for us, Ruffy. I have to say the the original one that he's doing looks absolutely magnificent. But you you look a bit caricaturish there. What do you think of that, Ruffy? Yeah, we nice wee side shed there. Uh, I don't know what year that was. You know that because uh, obviously I've had a, a wee centre parting for a, a long. Long, long time, but uh, I'd like you put a year on that one. But uh, maybe get some of these two on. Get get some of their old forties on. See what they look like. Well, I have to. T- I have to tell you, Jim Jim Scullion, uh, who uh, does a lot of our uh, artwork for the t-shirts, and that has got Barry's coming out, and Barry is an absolute belter. I think you'll be delighted with it. You look fantastic in it, Biggin. What, what year was it, Peter? I think I think it might have been uh, it might have been after the two thousand and two Scottish Cup final when you scored a free kick and you won three two. It might have been after that game. <laughs> I can't quite work out the year, but you were young in it. Yeah. Anyway, hopefully it's not the one he's been a skinhead. I was hoping it looks like a thug. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I tell you what, you've had some bad, bad hairstyles, you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, anyway, don't. Wait, wait, you go, Absolutely. honestly, wait, wait, what are you going to do the next couple of months? I don't know, it's just, it's just, it's just going yeah. to end up a big mop. Well, can, can I tell you something? Apparently, Tam, and I, I know I know everybody's now holding their mic down here so we get the right sound on this, but apparently, Tam, there is actually a set of clippers that you can get that just takes the sides out all in a row and it looks okay. You know, these cut-your-own-hairstyle. Um, so brush, I'm told I mean, that's the way it. ahead. Is it, have you seen it on the brush. advertisers? I've a seen brush? It. I'm thinking yeah. I've hey, one. They see that he's, he's probably bought it already. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, honestly, I, I, I'm watching some of the adverts and I'm thinking, "Oh, that looks good. I think I'll buy that." Eh? A motor, a motor for cutting all the hairs in your nose sounds good to me. Uh, Thirty-five ninety-nine. I think I'll buy one. <laughs> anyway, I'm resisting at the moment. I don't know about you guys. Weather's good. Stay at home. Stay safe. I've already made sure that I've got a bottle of wine ready and we're going to go out the back, Ruffy, um, and just have a wee glass of wine tonight. I think that's uh, the order of the day. Yeah, well, I hope uh, the weather keeps up because it is nice outside and I think everybody's cooped up inside. Would love to get in. Just if you get, even get a wee bit of space at the back of your house to get out there and just get a bit of fresh air. And you're right, a wee bottle of wine really helps it go down. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to take up archery tonight, Ruffy. That's what you're playing tonight. Yeah, the weekend. Weekend. I was cleaning out the garage there earlier and I found a, a bow and arrow uh, that my, my daughter had uh, <laughs> proper stuff. <laughs> so, so we'll be posting some pictures to see how that goes. And uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's proper stuff. Big target board, straw board. And it's William Hill, William Hill stuff. So. I'll see what kind of photos I can get done for the weekend. William Tell. Yeah, just, yeah thank you, <laughs> Tom. Tell, thank that's you, Tom. William Will. <laughs> <laughs> He's choking for a bit. That was He's choking for a bit. <laughs> <laughs yeah, thanks, thanks, Tom. Oh, At least well done, Tom. <laughs> One of us is listening. Anyway, apart from anything else, we'll try and get through as many of your messages as possible. And thank you to everyone for for basically some lovely messages coming through. And of course, a, a good bit of patter as well. You know, every now and then we get leathered, but we, we like it as long as it's not abusive. We, we love it. And we love the fact that so many people from right across the world all joining us. So with that in mind, I'll try and stop Ruffy breathing right into his microphone while we listen to the quiz. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, there you have it. We'll give you the answer by the end of today. I'm getting lots of people uh, coming through and giving us their messages. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to give as many of you a mention as possible. Uh, Nikki Twiggs in there, Jordan McKenzie as well, uh, who says, Barry looks like Shane from Westlife. Um, not a bad thing, Barry, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, also, Nikki, uh, Christopher Clark as well, Lynn McKenzie, good to have you with us. Neil Jones as well, Rhonda's dad, always good to have you on with us. Linda Brownlow has joined as one of the friendliest faces ever when you walk into the front doors of Celtic Park. So, uh, as you can see, lots of people, Eddie McLennigan, all joining us on Facebook, <coughs> YouTube as well. I'll read out some of your names, but let's cut to the chase. Big vote, huge vote, and a fair bit of consternation, I have to say, because uh, first and foremost, uh, here's the first of the statements that come out. They're all in chronological order of the madness that's gone on over the last few days. First of all, the joint response group says, we've agreed to extend the suspension of all levels of the game from professional to recreational until at least the 10th of June. The board had initially suspended football uh, until further notice with a stipulation of April 30th at the earliest. Uh, the Scottish FA Board has given due consideration to a letter received by the Scottish Government Minister for Public Health, Sport and Wellbeing, drawing attention to Health Protection Regulations 2020, which banned gatherings of more than two people. Mr Fitzpatrick stated these restrictions were unlikely to be lifted for at least 13 weeks and that NHS Scotland would be placed on an emergency footing until at least 10th of June 2020. Mr Fitzpatrick indicated that no group training would be permitted before the restrictions are lifted and noted medical advice that competitive matches could not take place for six weeks after training uh, recommences. So, Ruffy, no ball will be kicked before the 10th of yeah, June. Yeah, well, it's a sensible uh, statement. Uh, I think we all would agree with that. You know, obviously it puts a, a, some kind of date on when, you know, clubs would want to get back again. But again, you've said another six weeks after that. Yeah, just as Ruffy was in full, full tilt there, you know, yeah. again, I think the point he's going to make, Tam, is quite simply, six weeks players need to train to get ready. So you're talking about, we're now into July. Yeah, I think we're going to be into August before a ball's kicked, uh, to be honest, Peter. Um, you look at it, it's, it's government, and I, I just hope everybody stops with the conspiracy stuff. You know, it's rubbish. You know, people don't want the league finished. People, every single football fan wants this league finished, but it's not possible. I think that statement just tells you it's not possible this season. So we've got to put a tin hat on this season. And whether that's, you know, reconstruction or whatever, leave it up to the, the SPFL and the clubs. But this season's done, you know, and we have to look towards next season. Yeah, and I think something that we've been consistently stating on this programme for weeks now, uh, basically that you have to just look at the information that was coming out from the government. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work it out. There wasn't a ball going to be kicked. And then after that statement, there's there seems to be a fair bit of bickering, posturing, pandering to fans as well and, and clubs looking after their own interests because it's suddenly developed in this next statement into uh, a little bit of a tit for tat. I'm going to get Barry's thoughts on this in a moment, but uh, here's the next uh, release, which basically came from <coughs> Rangers um, on the resolution that they wanted to be put forward being denied. Rangers have received confirmation from the SPFL board. Uh, the le SPFL's legal advisor did not deem our member's resolution as competent. We sought to assist uh, assistance from the SPFL executive on several occasions yesterday to ensure our resolution was deemed competent. Now the SPL have belatedly identified the reason why our resolution was not competent. We will immediately resubmit our resolution. We are confused as to why attempts have been made to slow the progress of Rangers resolution. We've received numerous reports from fellow Scottish clubs relating to attempts to coerce and bully them into voting for the SPFL's resolution. We are proud many fellow clubs will stand strong and not be swayed. Our resolution was simply intended to urgently address the financial hardship faced by clubs whilst allowing more time to discuss and evaluate all options for completing this season in line with UEFA advice. Now, Barry, Rangers wanted to put a resolution out um, that was basically get money out to the clubs now. Uh, and they certainly weren't going to have um, this season declared at any point. Uh, they wanted, obviously, as long as possible before it's declared. But first and foremost, they made an accusation that there's bullying going on, uh, there's coercing by the SPFL, and they weren't happy that their resolution was not competent in the first place. And they said that they contacted the SPFL 
several times, which doesn't seem to be the case. I'm going to read you the next one in a moment, but give me your thoughts on Rangers on this one. Well, in terms of coming out and saying about other clubs, I hope it's true, Peter. If Rangers say that other clubs have been burnt to making decisions, well, hopefully these clubs in the coming days come out and, and make it clear. Because it is a strong statement for Rangers that's obviously accusing the bully, bullying tactics. So now, hopefully, these comments are true and these clubs who have been meant to have been bullied come out and, and let the public know about it. So a whole range of statement is 100% true and correct. Yeah, well, with that in mind, here's what the SPFL had to say in response to Rangers' accusations, including, of course, the fact that they apparently tried to contact them uh, on several occasions. The SPFL board received a requisition from Rangers, supported by two other clubs, that the board must issue a further resolution to members. This resolution sought to compel the SPFL to lend money to all 42 clubs. The board took legal advice from a leading QC on the proposed resolution by law. The members of a private company can require their board to circulate a resolution unless such resolution would be ineffective if passed. The clear legal advice received by the SPFL is the resolution received from Rangers is ineffective in terms of company law. As a result, the board determined this morning that it cannot be circulated to members. Rangers have expressed the desire to submit a further resolution. The SPFL lawyers will work with Rangers uh, as they will uh, with every other member club who wishes to put forward a resolution. And they go on to dispute in that press release that Rangers were co trying to contact them on several occasions, Tam. Uh, basically, they said that they were contacted by Rangers by email at 10.28 last night. So, quite simply, oh. we now have infighting. In a situation which is dire, they can't agree with each other. They're literally coming out with press statements to pander either to their supporters or someone somewhere is not telling the truth. And I'm not just talking about Rangers. I'm talking about clubs coming out and releasing statements which have no bearing whatsoever on what is proposed here. <coughs> this is a vote which needs 75% of the SPFL to determine whether the lower leagues are going to be declared as a champion and a relegation. That's the first thing. The second part of, of the Premiership will not be determined, I think, till after April 23rd's UEFA executive meeting. Yeah, I, I, listen, Peter, uh, you know, somebody's lying. You know, obviously Rangers have come out with a statement and basically the SPFL today have rubbished it. They've said it's nonsense. They've sent one email and it's not, it doesn't comply with law. So, you know, somebody's lying. You know, the thing for me with, with, with Rangers is I don't really get the. Obviously, I think they're trying to stick up for young, uh, for for clubs that are struggling for money, but I don't see the point in Rangers getting involved. I mean, let's be honest. Rangers' this season was finished. They were not going to win anything. They were thirteen points behind. They were out both competitions. I don't see why they they are getting upset with this and their fans are getting upset with this. I, I think I think to be to be to be fair on one positive uh, with. The, the resolution that Stuart Robertson was putting through, Ruffy, was Rangers were just like every other club. I think Rangers had a good point, which was, can we get money to the clubs now because they're all desperate for money now to try and save them? I think that's a great point by Rangers. The fact that everybody's going and arguing in this tittle-tattle over whether the league can be decided or not is just pandering to fans. Because at the end of the day, as we've said before, Ruffy, Somebody's going to have to call the league. There's no null and void. The league's going to be called sooner or later. I get where Stuart Robertson and the, the board at Rangers, like every other club, the money is crucial in the survival mode here. So, you know, I think there should have been some consultation with them to say, well, how do we, is there any legal way we can get money out to the clubs based on their position now? Yeah, I mean, as you know, we're, we're not legal people. You know, but as soon as I see that legal uh, jargons are getting thrown out there, it really baffles me, and it'll baffle a lot of people. You know, let's let's do some straight talking here. You know, we know the clubs need the money. You know, why we can run, you know, lawyers and everything to make this possible? Uh, it, why not? Common sense prevails. Uh, I just don't understand why uh, the SPFL are rushing this through in two days. 
I don't know what the hurry is. I don't know why there's been no talking about it. There's been no debate about it. It's just here, you lot. Make up your mind in two days. They wouldn't do that. If they were making any decisions in, in the SPL, there would be no decisions made over two days. They'd be taking three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. There, there seems to be an agenda here going about for the SPFL. And uh, and, and they want all the, the smaller clubs to make a decision. And then they'll take it into their own hands and make their own decision. That, that's the bit Ruffy, I can't understand. Ruffy, Ruffy, do you not think that the SPFL are under pressure from Sky? to get this league up and running by August. They've just obviously signed a £160 million deal in November. No, I think, I think the pressure's coming from Sky, to be honest. I think that's coming down to the SPFL and saying to them, listen, we need this league tied up and we need it going again in August. Um, because that, that deal, if, that deal, if that deal goes tits up, then we're all in trouble. Well, all the clubs are in trouble. No, but, yeah, but the point here, Tom, is quite simply, Sky will undoubtedly have a major say in the money that they're going to release to the clubs. But as Gordon Strachan said, uh, you know, only in the last 24 hours, he mentioned the fact that people are going to go and consult their lawyers and this is going to turn into one poison fight between individuals and their own interests non-stop uh, all the way through the summer. He, Gordon Strachan said he'd love for the season to be finished. But I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't see any way we can finish the season. And that's why I think the Sky element comes into it. And remember, we've already discussed, I don't know how everybody thinks Sky's got a bottomless pit of money. Barry, Sky, Sky as well as BT, as well as so many other broadcasting companies we've mentioned, are losing millions. They've got to look and say to themselves, <coughs> when we start back up, it's going to be a long, slow process to build up trust, to get people back, committing because a lot of people will be dumping sky sports bt sports because they won't have the money barry yeah no i totally agree with you but peter getting back let's be honest that there is no football going to get played that statement it came out it went june the 10th and you're talking six weeks after that they would expect the season to start that's the last week in july and next season is meant to start at the start of august so there's no way this season's going to be finished and the decisions that are going to be made. As I said a couple of weeks ago, Peter, it's going to disappoint some people. It's going to make some people happy. There's no wrongs or rights here. So whatever decision that comes out, they need to just accept it. Yeah, and with that in mind, um, I caught up earlier with a, a man who was more uh, on a f more than a few occasions privy to what goes on at these SPFL board meetings because I think we were all trying to second guess, um, you know, what goes on. I will hear from Stuart Gilmer in just a moment, um, but the, the big vote is taking place. We can't second guess. It's going to be very close which clubs are going to vote for the resolution and which are going to vote against it. I'm sure there are a fair few who are uh, obviously trying to get into bed with each other on this to try and kill off the votes or get it passed. Um, that's the type of thing that goes on. It's human nature. Um, but here's Gabriel Antonazzi, our reporter, just giving you a quick summation of what's on the agenda. All 42 SPFL clubs must cast their vote on the proposal to end the Championship, League One and League Two by 5pm this evening. And with 75% of clubs needing to be in favour, the plan is expected to just about squeeze through. But how will your club vote? Celtic will of course back the motion as table toppers and will be followed by most of the league. Rangers and Hearts headline opposition to the vote however after having a members amendment rejected this morning which called for the instant release of the end of season prize money without the campaign being over. Hibs and Aberdeen are the two unknowns in the Premiership both stating they don't agree with it but how they vote remains to be seen. The key battleground could be the Championship with bottom side Partick Thistle and promotion chasing Dundee both openly voting against the motion. That means none of the remaining eight clubs can reject the vote if the governing body want it to pass. But Inverness are undeclared, with their promotion hopes also set to be dashed. League One and League Two are grouped together and are slightly more of a foregone conclusion, uh, with clubs in dire need of the money. Most teams in the bottom division, outside of second place Edinburgh City, will back the plans, whilst League One has potential rejected votes in the shape of Falkirk, Strunra, East Fife and Dumbarton, but the SPFL will hope the numbers are there. With the results set to be announced early next week, prepare for more reaction and statements over the weekend, as the result of the vote sets a precedent for the Premiership if it cannot be completed. 
Yeah, so that sums it all up. We're going to hear from Stuart Gilmore very shortly, Ruffy, but from a party Thistle point of view in this, I noticed John Nelms uh, at uh, Dundee has mentioned that uh, they reckon it should be called on the basis of no promotion, no relegation in any of the divisions. Yeah, I've spoken to him a couple of times and we played with Partick Thistle up there. You know, he seems quite an educated guy, you know. But again, we get back to just what you were saying there. If you look at the way Gabriel's put that out there, not the SPFL, but the other teams, the teams that are going to say no are the teams that are going to be deprived of a, a playoff place, the teams that are going to be relegated, and that's the same in every division. So, again, it's self-preservation, as, as we all would expect. Nobody... Everybody wants to fight their own corner. The people in the middle will be just saying, look, just give us our money. Nothing's going to happen to us. We're not really bothering. And that's the way this vote is going to go. That's why I'm disappointed that it's taken just a two days of debate for this all to happen. Yeah, just on that point, Ruffy, it's not so much the fact that it's just two days of debate on this. We're in a situation where they're going to have to call the lower leagues because I think a lot of them will be in financial difficulty, more so than maybe the top clubs in the Premiership. I think it's it's slightly more difficult because there's more money at stake in the Premiership in Scotland. And of course, the the... SPFL board know that they're in a legal minefield with regards to what UEFA are are calling out at the moment and the implications of going early on it. So I think I think there's more of a legal minefield in the top flight. The bottom mm. flight, it's all about declaring it, setting it out, and then handing money out to them. I, I, I don't know if you agree with that, first of all. And second of all, can you give me an insight into how you think it's going to go? Because you obviously are privy to that with Partick Thistle. Yeah, well, I only can talk for the championship. I'd like to believe in the championship. You already, Gabriel's already said uh, Dundee aren't happy about not being get, able to get promotion, uh, the playoff uh, position in this one. We are definitely not going to go against it. Uh, and that's the way it is, you know. But I, I think uh, I'll be interested to see what Hibs do. I'll be interested to see where the SPFL vote because obviously that's got a, an extending vote after that because we all want league reconstruction. And it'd be interesting to see the, the, the teams that uh, fail to give the votes for the SPFL when re reconstruction comes, whether that is the way they're going to vote as well. Because league reconstruction is the big one for me. You know, we're all saying, forget about relegation. Let's get two teams up here, or four teams up here, two teams up here, two teams up here, two teams up the Barry, the Barry's league. And, and that, 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 I would love somebody to come out and say that's the way we're thinking. I'd love somebody in the SPL to say, look, guys, see when you vote, these are the things that we're seriously thinking about and 99 point whatever is going to happen if you all vote with us. And then I think people would vote rather than money, they would vote for football. So you're just wanting them to say, listen, when you cast this vote, we're definitely going to talk about expansion. Yes. And the other thing, I'd love somebody to come out and tell everybody, I know the leagues aren't finished, but I'd love somebody to come out in the SPFL board to say, this is why we can't hand out the money now, in some description. Okay. Right, Barry, um, you were talking on Sky. Obviously, we gave you a loan deal for just an hour with them, uh, and you've come back to us as well. Cheater. We thought we're going to, sh we were going to, sh we, we thought we we're going to ship him out, uh, Tam, because I thought it was a, I thought it was a Blackburn deal. I thought somebody had agreed to sell him behind my back. But anyway, he's here with us, uh, Barry. I'm, you did say, listen, I'm here for a long haul. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Barry, you did say I. Yes, I'm saying. Hey, McManus, let's not call anybody a mercenary right now. We're all, we're all, I'm going to be delivering your milk in three weeks. Um, Barry, Barry, it has implications for Kelty because you don't want yep. to win a league or get into, you can't even get a playoff to get into the top flight. No, exactly, Peter. I, I've said this for the word go. I would rather win the league fair and square. Now, I'm. Um, I know that ain't going to happen because there's no football going to get played. But in terms of the reconstruction side of it, I think it's been a waste of the last 16, 17 months of what we've tried to build a team and trying to get the club promoted. Um, we're six points ahead of Bonnie Rigg at this moment in time. Albeit they've got a game in hand, but look, if it means they're just keeping the leagues as it is, basically the last 16 months or so has been worth nothing for us. Um, and I, I'm saying that for Bonnie Rigg as well. Bonnie Rigg have fought hard for Ora up in the Highland League as well. 
Um, they've been declared champions. So I, I think to limit the damage of Scottish football and to actually make it better, Peter, I think reconstruction would be the way forward. Now, I'm not just saying that from the Celtic side. I'm saying it in a whole Scottish football to try and make it more interesting. It's been the same for the, the past few years. It's getting <coughs> boring. Um, so let's change it. This is the time, albeit through this virus, which is a difficult thing that's happening in the world at this moment in time. But let's change it. Let's try and do something different. Yeah, just out of curiosity, a lot of people obviously like to uh, comment on <laughs> either the club or we're all wearing, or indeed if anybody's gone for a suntan. People think that Ruffy is uh, <laughs> permanently looking as if he's just come back off holiday. But Tam, uh, you've changed dramatically since you were on on Wednesday. I mean, have you been have you have you been wearing paper pants and your wife's been spraying your whole body? What's happened to you? <laughs> I told you I've got the wee light. I've got the wee light thing for the, the selfie. My wife's got the selfie light, and uh, she's turned it up to about a thousand watts. So I'm like, I'm like, I've got some tan in my mouth. Tell me that's no spray here. tan. Tell, oh. tell me that ain't a spray tan. Come no. on, no. come on. So. <laughs> Brilliant. It's not hey, bad. That's my natural. Fire. Well, I'm not tan. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, Barry. Let's, let's, see let's see your trunk line. Let's see your let's see your trunk line. By the way, can I can I just That's a spray tan. That's a spray tan. No! no. That's a light. Can I, can, I, can I tell you something? Honestly, Barry, that's that's why we signed them. Punditry like shut up you and show his belly button. Honestly, does it does it get any better? Tom Cowan singing yesterday, and Tom McMahon is showing his belly button. The world's gone mental. Uh, now, uh, lots of people. Thanks to uh, Richie, Alec Collins as well uh, for uh, obviously giving us their thoughts on all of this. Uh, Stephen McNamara. Uh, fair play to Tam's wife cutting his hair. Yeah, of course, this is a great thing about it. You start to do mad things. Hi to John Miller, Dougie Liddell, David McCutcheon, Craig Marshall, Willie O'Donnell, Alec Kelly as well. Uh, lots of people on our Facebook page. Thank you to you all. If you do get a chance, and we sometimes make this appeal to you, share uh, the uh, feed, uh, like, follow and share is on Facebook and if you're on YouTube thank you for joining us on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and stick with us now, still lots to talk about with this because we're waiting for that SPFL vote, uh, it'll probably come out over the weekend and, and we'll get a chance to react to it with you um, and I know that the Rangers situation uh, is certainly you know opened a can of worms here. There's real unrest among the clubs. They're all arguing and bickering with each other. You can give us your point of view on that as well. And we'll also reveal to you just shortly, uh, we put out who you thought were the best Scottish midfielders in Scotland over the last 20 years. We've all had our say on that. And who are the best uh, foreign midfielders? We've whittled it down to four midfielders who are Scottish, four midfielders who are foreign. Uh, and you can have your say on that as well today. Now, Earlier on, I caught up with the SPFL former chairman of St Mirren, uh, Stuart Gilmore, to get his thoughts on this whole crazy affair. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by former St Mirren chairman Stuart Gilmore, uh, ahead of what will be a momentous vote. Uh, Stuart, not too long ago, uh, your old club St Mirren just released a statement saying that they will be backing the SPFL resolution on the lower leagues and the decision to uh, you know, award championships to people where they're in the top position and relegation. What's your take immediately on that? Well, it'll be the usual story in any of these votes. It'll all be self-interest, let's be honest about it. Um, everyone has got to put their own club first, despite being part of a group, uh, namely the SPL. And it will be interesting when I was having a look at the league this morning and trying to work out who would vote what way. And uh, it, it will be interesting. I, I don't envy the, the, the chairman trying to run their football club at the moment. Uh, that must be a very difficult position to be in, and I'm sure a lot of them are looking to, to have a payout ASAP. Tell me this, you'll be privy to this. Is there a wee bit of, I wouldn't use the word jiggery-pokery, but heavily influencing each other as mates? Is there calls to say, look, we're voting this, we stick with us? Oh, I think there'll be one or two uh, phone calls made around trying to convince people um, to, to go one way or the other. 
Uh, I had to be looking at myself because I believe they need 75%. Um, now, obviously, Rangers have declared and Hearts have declared that they would vote against it. Uh, I can see the other Edinburgh club voting against it because I think uh, Hibs, if it goes down to points per game, then St Johnston would jump into sixth and Hibs would be seventh. So you may find that Hibs vote against it as well. Uh, but I'm yeah, just reading with big lines. Yeah, you, you mentioned there that everybody seems to be, you know, obviously looking after number one. That has to be the priority and their own survival. But do you think there's a need now for a kind of a collective responsibility? Because some clubs we're looking at could be in danger of folding, Stuart. And I'm not talking about the bottom end. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, there is. Regrettably, it doesn't happen very often in uh, football. It is man, mind, thyself. And everybody will look at the actual position that they are in themselves. Um, with with the government's furlough situation where the maximum's two and a half thousand, uh, that's going to affect some clubs more than others. Uh, I mean, the clubs in, in, that are paying lesser wages um, are, can probably ride through a bit of this more easily um, than some of the clubs with the bigger wages. So it, it, it's an interesting time. It's an interesting time. What goes on at these meetings, Stuart? I mean, is there, is there such a thing as a bit of bullying going on, you know, where the SPFL are concerned? I mean, the Rangers managing director, Stuart Robertson, says he feels as if they've been bullied and coerced into this. And they've obviously tried to get a resolution through and it was knocked back because apparently it wasn't properly done. I mean, Stuart Robertson's on the board. I mean, is there any communication whatsoever to say, look, Stuart, if you're going to do this, you do A, B and C? Well, it is quite difficult. Because uh, Celtic obviously are, are big players on on the board, and uh, and with you know the, the people who are advising what's going on. Uh, I mean the lawyers, etc. I mean some of the lawyers have gone from SPL to working for the SPL or or for the company for the SPL to Celtic. So there is influence there. Um, there's influence in a lot of positions, there's an influence in a lot of clubs, and there'll have been a lot of phone calls going on. Um, I saw Livingston declared their hand, you know, that they, they would want it to finish um, as well. So I think it's going to be very close. It's going to be very close. Um, will people take a, a, a bigger view at the moment? Probably not. They are, they yeah. will be uh, something like that. They, they are, have got to look after their own club, how they pay their staff, their wages, etc., uh, etc. Et so it, it is difficult. Now, I'm just talking about from my own personal point of view. I, I've read over the last couple of weeks your point of view on it. Um, I personally think you know, we, we've got to get a resolution that declares champions across all the leagues. I think because of the big clubs and the problems that we foresee, I would expand the league. What would you do if you had the vote or you wanted to change for the better? I'm all for expanding the league. I always have been, um, particularly to 16 teams. Uh, however, I don't think we should be expanding the league just to suit a situation. Uh, I think that's wrong. Um, I understand exactly where people are coming from. I mean, there was talk about 14. 14 for me is no better than where we are with 12. That's just accommodating, not having a, a, a relegation more than anything else. And for me, that's wrong. Um, we need time. If you, if you want to go through a, a procedure to increase the league, then look at it properly uh, and not in a knee-jerk reaction. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a double, it's, a, it's a double argument you have there, Stuart, and I, and, I, and I read it with interest. Maybe the wording of the way, you know, for example, I say, I don't want to see Hearts go. I don't think we can afford it in the climate to actually lose big clubs with a huge support when we're going to come out the other end uh, and be in real financial trouble. It's probably not better to say save Hearts. It's probably better to frame it by saying, should we be expanding the league? Because we know clubs are going to be in financial difficulty. We have to do something different in extreme circumstances rather than me simplifying it by saying save Hearts. Yeah, that's a good argument. I mean, it really is a very, very good argument. You to understand that 
argument totally. Um, as I say, 14 is not the answer for me. That's just another jumbo with splits and da da da. Uh, the answer for me is, is, is 16. Um, and minimum, you know. The, what, what has actually disappointed me to, to move slightly on from that is UEFA's role in all of this. Um, UEFA like to make uh, big statements and push as to what's happening in, in European football. And I actually think this is the time where UEFA should come out and make a real statement about, because they want to know who's going to be in the Champions League, who's going to be in the Europa League, etc, etc. And they should give guidance um, to the leagues in Europe in general, not just the, the big five, um, to take the pressure away from them making the decision, the individual clubs making that deci uh, decision, because it will be of self-interest, as we've already stated. And they've been disappointing in that. And with that, just to finish, Stuart, I mean, Gordon Strachan's come out today and said, you've got to try and finish the league, because quite simply, clubs will just go through the court process and will be involved in legal minefields forever and a day if this is called on the basis of where you are in the league now. Do you see that happening with clubs saying, oh, we're not accepting it, we're going to court, we're going to challenge you, and it just drags on for years? Well, I think, I think if, it's, if it's voted through today properly and it's per the rules of the SPL, then uh, I don't think they'll have any legal challenge. Um, you, you, you join the SPL, it's a, you're invited to join it, even when you come up from the championship. You've got to go over certain criteria. You've got to meet certain criteria to become a member. And uh, that's all part of the, the process of, of being an SPL club. Um, I, I'm really concerned about the legalities in football at the moment. I think we've gone overboard with it, in particular um, with the, the, the disciplinary procedures now. that the, the whole compliance setup has become a legal minefield. Um, which that's not what it was brought in to do. It was to get football to sort out its internal issues internally. And I think I don't think there'll be a, a legal challenge. I think it'd be easy to defend any legal challenge because it was a, a vote under the constitution of the, the SPL. Uh, just a last point, and this is me just out of interest in trying to jog my memory back the way. The SPFL had the chance to change the voting structure when Rangers were out of the league from that 11-1 situation um, to possibly 8-4. Was that an opportunity missed where today, in the current circumstances, we could have actually thought more about all the clubs rather than the self-interest? Yeah, it was an opportunity, um, an opportunity that uh, wasn't grasped. A number of us were very keen on getting a lot of the votes changed um, to, to make it more sensible. Um, and well, the, the club that were not prepared to, to, to vote against uh, Celtic were Aberdeen. It was as simple as that. And that was the opportunity, and that opportunity, needless to say, passed uh, when Rangers have come back in. Um, and I think it's a, a, a regret at the time. Stuart, as ever, to you and your family, uh, stay safe and well. Stay in this weekend. I know it's a, when that sun comes out, we'll all be dying to go out there. But uh, thank you very much for coming on and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Peter. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Take care. Yeah, great to hear from, uh, of course, uh, a former ex St. Mirren chairman there, um, Stuart Gilmer, uh, and good to get his points of view on it. What did you make of it all, Ruffy? Yeah, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, I think one of the biggest things I, I picked up on was when you asked him his idea of uh, league reconstruction for the SPFL. And it, it just shows you why they can't come to any decisions because everybody's got a different view. Stuart's preference would have been 16. A lot of people was 14. You know, when you get that thrown around a table with so many people were not agreeing with the voting system we've got just now, that's possibly why league reconstruction doesn't happen, because uh, everybody's got different views and what they think should be the way ahead.
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, listen, uh, I'm going to uh, answer a few of the, the points that are coming through as well, guys, and you can jump in on it here. Uh, Stuart Craig says, so we don't relegate teams based on the size of their support. Uh, he says, Peter is tripping. Uh, Stuart, um, obviously, if you listened in the full context of what I'm saying, is basically we are going to be in financial meltdown. There's talk of a recession. There's talk of something similar to the Great Depression. Now, I don't know about you, Stuart, but that is involving a lot of people with financial hardship a lot of companies going bust and a lot of clubs struggling to survive. My point here is not about saving hearts. I think the point, Tam, is basically when we come out of this, I think we should be looking at a collective where we get as many teams as possible in the top flight with a chance to actually play football again in a change of the league structure. And and, and I don't think coming out of it we can afford to say goodbye to hearts and th- put them in the championship with 16,000 fans travelling everywhere. Money is going to be in short supply. Peter, can I just go back to the point that the chap made there? Um, see if it was Hamilton Ackies that were bottom of the Premiership just now and Alloa bottom of the Championship. Do you think there would be the same clamour for league reconstruction? I, it's a very good question. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I still think that a lot of people will look at the bigger picture on this and say, well, Look at some of the clubs that we might lose. What can we do to save them? What What would you do other than, say, Hamilton and Alloa? Say Hamilton, for example, in the Premiership are in a situation where they're in danger of, of going bust. Do you think there's going to be a different attitude? Is that what you're suggesting? Well, no luck, Hamilton. Yeah, I think there would be. I personally think if Hamilton were bought in the league just now, I don't think there'd be as much debate and much clamour for league reconstruction. Same with Partick Thistle. You've got two big clubs potentially getting relegated from their, from their respective divisions. Peter, and I, I don't, I, I, honestly, I don't think it would be the same clamour for it. I just think we're trying to save hearts rather than looking at the bigger picture. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting not... point. It's an interesting point he makes, Peter. Just say, and, and I get where you're coming from with hearts. I really do with the support and everything they bring. But just say for talking sake, hearts had beat St Mirren in that last game. And it was uh, St Martin that were sitting at the bottom of that league. But we were just saying to ourselves, well, they've only got a 3,000 crowd, no loss to us. Yeah, well, well I'm, going to go, I'm going to go to Barry on this, and, and I'm not dodging it. I'll, I'll nail it for you now. About two months ago, I, would, I could easily go back on countless weeks when I suggested we should expand the league for the benefit of the game. But the problem then is what's actually happened is I also mentioned as a caveat to that, I don't think we can suffer in a financial meltdown the loss of a huge club like Hearts. I think Tam makes a good point. Would I be saying it if Hamilton are there? I don't know if I'm showing preferential treatment to Hearts because of their support because my initial point, Barry, was something that you and I mentioned a couple of months ago, You know whether Hearts were at the bottom or not, which was quite simply expand this league, you know, for the benefit yeah. of the many, not just hearts. Yeah, but listen, I get where Tam's coming from. It is a, it is a, a valid point <coughs> he makes. But, Peter, as you say, I mean, longer than two months ago, 26 months ago, 12 months ago, we were talking about this league, uh, reconstructing the leagues. I think for the good of the game, now, <coughs> it might be a bit different because the hearts will have got support. Patrick Thistle, Ruffield, correct me if I'm wrong here, are 4,000 roughly. So they are big clubs, but if it was Hamilton in the same position, I would still be going for league reconstruction. See, seeing the yeah. whole scale of this, Peter, and I know it, we were talk, talking about hearts and Patrick Thistle and big clubs and that, and I'm not just going back to Barry's situation, you know, because he's here, because we're talking about some kind of fair play here. What is fair in Brora winning their league and Kelty practically winning their league as well and you're not allowing them to have a playoff because Breakin aren't going to go down after all the work they've put in? How is that fair that you decide that Breakin, you're okay, you just sit there and we'll save you? Well, listen, I, I would I would say to you right now, I am not the legal representation for the SPFL. I agree with you, it's not fair. That's why Barry has suggested, uh, and I suggested, uh, you know, way, way back, that we should expand the leagues for the benefit. There was always going to be on the agenda. Let's not forget this. 
This is not something that was thrust upon everybody. There was always going to be <clears throat> talks this year about expanding the league. It was on the cards to bring the two Lowland League clubs in. And Barry, Barry uh, you'll obviously back me up on this. This was, a, yeah. this was on the agenda to be discussed for possibly the season after this one. Yeah, for the season 21-22, that was the talk about expanding the leagues or reconstructing the leagues, whatever way you want to uh, name it. That, that, was, that was the talk. So, listen, for me, now <laughs> is the perfect time to go and do it. Bring it forward a year or so later and, and do it. Yeah, Peter, absolutely. Let me, just add, let me ask you one. Yeah, just let me ask you one here. If just say for talking sake, Hearts get relegated, right? And Partick Thistle yeah. get relegated and Stranraer yep. get relegated and then yep. you SPL decide to have league league construction. Yeah. How do you reverse how do you reverse that? Ruffy. You've already and I've you've said, already you've already relegated two no, teams. No, 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 hang down, hang fire. Hang fire and I'll tell you what I told you a couple of weeks ago, and I'll tell you what I tell you ad nauseum, which is quite simply Nothing in life is set in stone. People change the rules, you know, at the drop of a hat. Just because something's in the rules now doesn't mean it can't be changed. You know, you only have to look at the government, uh, you know, on a daily basis. Something's not, uh, you know, set in stone, but we have to react to the circumstances that we're living in. And this is, this is the same with any business or organisation. If something means your survival or for the betterment of the organisation, whether it's football, tennis, baseball, you name it, anything, even in business, in a business sense, if you think it's going to save or enhance or, you know, give people a better quality of product, people change, Ruffy. So a week from now, if this vote goes through today and suddenly you find yourself with, oh, wait a minute, we're relegated, three weeks from now, Ruffy, you could be on you know, a stay of execution. Believe me, it can yeah. change, Ruffy. It can change. Yeah, but what worries me is when you get statements for the SPFL like we got today. I know, but, but Ruffy... To, to Rangers, that, that's the, that, they go, they go I, by the rules and regulations to suit themselves. Now, yeah, but listen, Ruffy, listen. Don't think for a minute that Rangers and every other club at times release press statements to try and pander to a certain group, either their supporters or to try and, uh, you know, uh, try and force people to think a different way and take their eye off the ball. Uh, you know, Rangers are not the first club to release a statement suddenly saying they tried to contact the SPFL on several occasions and this is what they want to do <clears throat> for the benefit of the whole game. They're not the first club to do that. Celtic do it on a regular basis. Hearts and Hibs, it's all about trying to portray themselves in a certain light and it doesn't necessarily paint the full picture of what's going on. You know, okay, at the let, end of the let, day, Rangers, Rangers had a press release, right. which was a very good point, which is, can we all get money now? That was... That, that was to be applauded. But for the rest of the tittle-tattle about the league cannot be decided because of sporting integrity, <clears throat> give me peace. There's no sporting integrity. Are you kidding me? Scottish football shouldn't be standing on a platform talking about sporting integrity. We don't have any. Okay, well, let me give you a matter of interest. See a matter of interest. See the, the four guys here. What, what, what the, what's your thoughts on it in terms of should it be finished? Champions? Reconstruction? I'll go everybody? first. I'll go first, Barry. Right. My preference is to finish the season. It always has been from the very start. <coughs> the government, the SFA statement out yesterday that no football at all for, until June the 10th in a six-week training period. So you're talking to the end of August, the start of August till the season starts, restarts. I just don't think clubs will survive that long. So for me, the, 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 best, the best option for me now is to get the vote and then go to re uh, league reconstruction. Bring, I would go two up, two up two up and I would bring yourselves and um, Brora into League Two. And that, that, that would, that's, that's, my, that's what I would do. Rafi, let's have your thoughts. Well, <laughs> first of all, I'd promote Partick Thistle immediately. <laughs> 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 Maybe set the bottom of the league. They have to be promoted. They're a big club. They can't lose them. No. <laughs> Peter. 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 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they play well every single week, party. Every single oh, yeah. get, Monday was, get, uh, we were brilliant. We were brilliant. What was the score? Yeah. This, this, the, beat this is the longest unbeaten no. spell, by the way. No, I don't. No, I would. 
I, I, I know, I know you. I know you're saying. I, I'm a wee bit. I'm a wee bit like. I'm a wee bit uh, like Tam favouring Tam here, and I know you and Barry are are, are are saying the football's dead and buried. I would like to think we're going to come out of this at some time, and if it is June, a month into July, if we can start playing in August. We get this league out the road in August, and we just bump the whole season into a, like starting September or October, and go right through to May or June, and we'll stop all this haggling. We'll stop all this legal stuff. You, Peter, you said things can change. You said yeah, things can no, change. No, 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 no. What Barry said as well. No, 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 no. Let me tell you what Barry did. Is Barry asked the question and said, "What do you guys think?" And you've said just bump it on, and 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 how I'll, I'll give you my opinion now. Not a ball will be kicked. The SPFL, whether this vote goes or not, will have to go to a resolution. If they don't get it, they'll have to go to a different format to try and put something else that gets agreed. The SPFL will be looking in two weeks' time after the April twenty third UEFA executive meeting, and they will call this league, and they will call Celtic champions, and they will say Hearts are going to be relegated. Take it as red. There's not a ball going to be kicked this season, believe me. And that's because most people listen to the government, listen to the chief medical officer, understand the difficulties that are going on, and then they also look at the complexities of what's going on with the TV deals and the clubs and the current financial state they're in. Not a ball will be kicked. Celtic will be declared champions. Hearts will be relegated. Dundee United will be the champions. And at the bottom end, your team are going down. But I will now add one thing to you, Ruffy. I think what I'd like to happen, like to see happen then, league reconstruction, 14, 16, I don't mind. There will be league reconstruction, but they will call the leagues because UEFA and all the TV deals and all the leagues will not be able to follow in a, in a kind of a unilateral situation of bumping their league while Belgium have declared theirs, while France wants to play theirs out, and then Germany decides the game's up. So there won't be a ball kicked. They will declare the champions. There could be change, Ruffy, and I think they need to change because clubs will go bust. So they need to think about the collective <laughs> instead of being selfish with each other. But well, believe me, I, he's, not he's gave you a, a bit ball. of hope at the end, Ruffy. He's gave you a wee bit of hope no, at the end there, son. No, no, I, I'm just going to hang fire until <clears throat> if this vote gets bumped tonight, what is plan B? I'm dying to hear what plan B is. No, pl pl plan B is they go back and again tweak it. I don't know which way they're going to tweak it, Ruffy. hope it's but not they Mark Warburton's plan B. Well they, well, they will tweak it, believe me, Tom, and then they'll go they'll back again tweak it. because they'll follow protocol. But believe me, Ruffy, not a ball's being kicked. They will call that premiership yeah. and Celtic will be called champions and Hearts will be relegated. But that little bit is there is a possibility for change and it can happen. Mm -hmm. And do you think the English English FA will follow with that as well? <clears throat> I think I think what a lot of people are waiting on. Remember, the English FA, the English Premier League Ruffy, are not hanging on because of some morality on this. They're hanging on it's like money. death because because their bottles crashed on the money. It's a billion pounds. So it's not taking the moral high ground for the benefit of the fans. It's, by the way, we don't want to lose this billion pounds here. We've got to work out right to the nth degree how we somehow release that money and keep our clubs alive. So don't give me sporting integrity. It's all about greed. It's all about survival. It's all about money. And, and they'll call it eventually as well, Ruffy, when they realise they can't kick a ball. There's no chance they'll kick a ball either. Liverpool will be champions. Aston Villa are going down. Well, we'll, we'll have to all wait and see in that one. We'll all have to wait. You know, obviously, he's got the, <laughs> everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got an opinion. No, you're by the way, I, honestly, it was just interesting to you listen to everybody's ideas and what they think should happen. No, that, that's why I, I asked think the, the question. I think the, I think the bottom line is league reconstruction. You know, we've yeah. all said we want to change. We've been saying it for five years, six years, seven years, but we need to find out why it's not happening. What Ruffy, is the yeah, line of why it's not happening? Ruff, Ruff, Ruffy's up to ante big time on the le league reconstruction over the last week, I must admit. He's really into it now. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. I, don't, no. I, don't, I, I, I would be right behind the SPFL if they'd come out and said, see by Friday, could you all let us know if you want league reconstruction? First, number yeah. one. 
and see if you okay. don't vote for league reconstruction. We'll go league reconstruction. And by the way, if you vote this way, we'll give you your money. Okay, What's listen, it run we, a wee bit? we feel your pain. We're with you. We're all on your side. We want to see Barry. We want to see one Kelsey Jags. Hearts one of Jags. In the in the in the in the proper league two. That's all I'm saying to you, Ruffy. What's the yep. picture behind your behind your head? Uh, the picture behind my head. Uh, uh, my dad, I think, got the official program from the Partick Thistle Celtic game in 1971, and he got both sets of players to sign it uh, and the referee. And wow. if you could guess him. If you could guess how much you got into that, how much it was to buy that program at that time, you'd want to watch. 1971. Which watch? Is it your Rolex one or is it your Fisher Price watch? It'll be Fisher Price one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> one shilling. One shilling. Correct. Well done. Hey! <laughs> oh, uh, now, can I just, can I just, can I just say to you, um, Celtic? Uh, a couple of things I want to get, and we'll have a bit of fun as well. Uh, Celtic have released a statement, and their players uh, have wage deferrals as well. Peter Law will release a statement. I'd like to pay tribute to Neil and the players for their desire to play their part and the outcomes achieved. I am also grateful to my own executive team for the commitment they've devoted to this outcome in very difficult working circumstances and also their own willingness to play a part in the measures adopted. This is wage deferrals uh, and, of course, reductions in salaries. I'm extremely appreciative of the willingness of everyone concerned to recognise the practical difficulties which this awful crisis has created. Celtic are in a strong financial position but we are not immune to this unique set of circumstances. We will negotiate and overcome these unprecedented times of challenge with continued teamwork and support for each other. And I would like to thank our fans for the continued support which they give to the club. Our togetherness is our strength. So that's Peter Lowell. Uh, and I think the big line there, guys, is they are not immune, Tam, to these unusual set of circumstances no I, I think I think the bigger clubs Peter with the bigger wage bills will be getting hit harder with this I think I think Stuart Gilmer touched on it um, briefly when he was in his interview that a lot of the clubs that are paying smaller wages can, can get the government help with two and a half thousand a month and that would cover a lot of wages um, but the bigger yeah. clubs I mean Celtic's wage bill must be huge it must be crippling them at the minute yeah, another thing I would like to apologise to everyone, I didn't realise it, Patrick McMenamin says, why have you got a Peter Lowell uh, statement from Celtic with a Rangers badge behind it? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did. I did in. not. Uh, that's brilliant. Well done, Patrick. I did not spot that, but I can tell you right now, our producer is going to get a kick up the backside because practically every statement we've had has had a Rangers badge behind it, which is obviously it's part of uh, Barry's contract. He must see the Rangers badge on the program, or he's not. He's joining Sky. It's as simple as that. So uh, we've we'll had to. Oh, we've had to agree to all Barry's demands. He's unbelievable. Uh, can I just say, Gavin Hunter, Thomas McFetridge, uh, George Telfer, Willie McGowan, thousands of people across uh, the football show on the Facebook and thousands like John McLean, David Frew as well, Alison Carroll uh, and Sean O'Connor, so many people across YouTube as well. Can I just say to you, thank you very much for all your comments. I'd love to read them out. One guy has made a complaint saying that I didn't read out his uh, suggestion for the change in the league reconstruction. Ruffy, I'm sure you'll agree, if I had to read out everybody's suggestions for the league expansion, we'd be here till half two in the morning. Yeah, I think everybody has uh, would like some change. I think the, the, the supporters out there want to see something. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. Look at Ruffy. Look at Ruffy's smiling face as if he's got an inside track from the party this old board. He's you know not, what you remember? No, no, no. no, should, no should surely he tell you, Peter. No, no. Should what happens? Tell this, you, give, give this is that. This is what he does, Larry. Watch this. This is what he does. Before he comes on, he goes, and here is the words from Jerry Britton. Right. I'll keep them over here. Yes, I believe Partick Thistle should be saved. They are a club who have got lots of fans. We should be saved. This is an outrage, says Jerry. Comma. Yeah. New paragraph. <laughs> okay. So, uh, with that in mind, I can't wait. Look, Barry's off. He's away well, to do another sack. Barry's back. Barry's <laughs> back. Oh, I, I thought, hey, I thought he's, not, BB, he's not on. BBC. I know. The BBC Sport. 
Aye, bring him over time. Absolute mercenary, mercenary uh, man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Tom, I listen, love the you're, He's desperately trying to cage you, Fergie. I know. Listen, Peter knows. The gaffer knows what I'm like. Well, can I tell you something? I'll tell you right now, Barry Ferguson. The best compliment I can pay you is I would take you into the trenches with me. It's as simple as that. Twenty-five years, absolutely magnificent. Uh, listen, uh, even when I used to call Tom and say, "Any chance of an interview, Barry?" and he'd go, "No, I can't. The club won't they let me." <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was unbearable, honestly. Oh, oh, just, imagine, you know, go imagine. Oh, oh, absolutely. Well, you were always available for an interview, Tom. I remember right. speaking. I, I, remember, read, read I, remember, quote. I remember speaking to the PR man at Derry City. He said, "Oh, Tom's speaking to everybody." <laughs> uh, so, uh, on that <laughs> on that note, uh, thanks very much to everyone who's posting messages. Can I just please um, mention to you? And this is the only th the reason I do this. The 99% of people who come on Facebook and YouTube are thoroughly decent people, genuinely decent. Uh, there are, you know, 1% of people who come on and, and start posting nonsense and abuse and start talking about, you know, if it's not EBTs, it's sporting integrity and scalping each other and battering each other. Please, this is not the program for you. This is a football show. Please refrain and, and, and jump onto some other mad site. 99% of the people here are really nice and love their club and are passionate about it. And I'll tell you what we love, Tam McManus. Have a look at this. Here are the final four Scottish midfielders that got the vote. Right, the fans had their vote on this. <laughs> <There's> th <laughs> yeah, the listen, fans had listen, I'll take you three. Yeah, I'll take you three of them on. <laughs> right, that, that's that's the best Scottish midfielders of the last twenty years. The fans had their votes. They've been voting in the thousands right across it. But we're going to call a one, two, three, four. So I'm going to start first on this one, Tam, and I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to go Ferguson first for me. <coughs> Second, I'm going to go Lambert. Third, I'm going to go Scott Brown. And then fourth, I'm going to go Callum McGregor. From the four that we have an option on, but Fergie gets my vote. Right. I will go the same as you. I'll go Barry first, Lambert second, McGregor third. And, oh, who was it? Who was fourth? Rooney. Rooney? Rooney. No, Bru Bruni, Bruni third, <laughs> McGregor fourth. fourth. That will not get back to him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ruffy. Oh God! Now I'm not just saying this because he's sitting there. So I'm going to put Barry fourth. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, put Barry Barry first. Uh, Paul Lambert. I was a big Paul Lambert fan. Yeah, Bruni, and then Callum McGregor. Yeah, yeah Barry. Same. You can't vote for yourself, but of the three there, where would you put them in the order? It's a, it's a hard one. Like, Lambo was coming to end his career, Peter, when I played with him at, at Scotland um, and obviously uh, at Celtic in the, the late 90s, early 2000s. Do you know what? I'm a big fan of Callum McGregor. I'm not just saying this. I think he's an un, unsung <laughs> hero. I do. I think he's brilliant, different class. So I would probably go with the boys that I've mostly played against. I'll go Callum McGregor, Scott Brown, Lambo. Right, okay. Peter, Peter, um, Peter what, pa yeah. what paper do you think that'll be in the model? <laughs> <laughs> my, I tell my you, three I, best, I, my three I, best I Celtic think... players, you'll not even be in it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I think, I think Callum McGregor goes under the radar. He does yeah. so much good work. No, nah, he's, he's a good a, lad, you're a, right. He's a Terrific football player. Terrific football player. Yeah. And and just a reflection of the fans. Lots of people voted. Actually, most of the fans actually had Lambert out in front. Malcolm Miller says Brown, Barry, McGregor and Lambert. Sometimes, you know, it, it depends if you've watched, if you're a fan. Here's the best four or the final four foreign midfielders that we had. 
Don't know about you guys, but that's that's that's. Uh, who wants to go first? <laughs> who wants to go first? Uh, Good to I'll, see I'll, there's I'll, two Rangers I'll... players there. <laughs> Barry first. Okay. Go on, Baz. Go on, give us your one, two, three, four. Ron, Ronald De Boer. <laughs> Ronald De Boer. Yep. But I've checked Davis and Stan. It's a good shout, actually. Um, <coughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to go Maravchik, Ronald De Boer, uh, and then I'm going to go Petrov and Davis. That's what I was going to go, Peter. Yep, yeah. exactly where you were going to go. Maravchik first for me, yep. Ruffy? Uh I'm going to go Petrov, Maravchik. Uh, who were the two Rangers players? <laughs> De Boer and Davis <laughs> You're such an You are such an idiot You're really, no, are you just, no, 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 no I'm going to go Petrov I'm going to go Petrov Because I, I think he's an outstanding player De Boer next Pe uh, And then probably Davis and Maravchik Maravchik fourth Maravchik bottom Yeah, I just don't think he was here long enough, Peter I don't think he's yeah, on, I know he's he was the a gym. wonderful I know he's a wonderful player, and I know all the skill he's got and everything. But played played very. Uh, I, I, just, I just think I'd like to have seen a lot more of him to yeah. see how yeah. really yeah. good he was. Yeah. Peter, I hope Peter will get relegated. You, you numpty. What do you know about football, by the way? He could trap Peter. a ball with his arse. Of course, <laughs> so could I. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> you remember um, you remember the goal Maravchik scored against Hibs he, he rocketed it for about 40 <coughs> yards in the top corner I hope so I did the commentary ah, he scored a schemer but I, I was playing that game and McLeish we came in at half time we were 4-0 down at half time and McLeish came in after the, at half time and started slaughtering me for no shutting Maravchik down I was a striker he says, you're, he says I told you to drop into the hole into the midfield and pick him up <laughs> I went, what, he just had it for 40 yards in the top corner, Gaffer. <laughs> uh, uh, now, just before we go, guys, uh, uh, and I'm sorry for keeping you so long. We had a right good Barney today, and I do hope uh, lots of you enjoyed the, the, the madness that's gone on here, uh, especially the extended SPFL um, vote that's going on. Uh, now, we actually spotted something in the Ballon d'Or magazine, Barry, and this is probably something you'll be able to answer because of your youth. Tam as well, definitely Ruffy. <clears throat> we had uh, uh, a feature, which is the top 50 most iconic strips of all time, was released by Ballon d'Or uh, over the last 24 hours. And they put together a list, and we've obviously tried to feature the top five and a few others that were mentioned in the top 50. tell you some absolute belters in there but when I was a wee boy Barry you couldn't go to shops and buy replica strips and I have to say my all time favourite was <coughs> you know Ajax that strip with Cruyff with the big red stripe was magic yeah I actually had the Maradona one the Napoli one 
Um, you remember the Robert Stores? Remember that in Glasgow? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I used yeah. to get yeah. that time and all. I used to love going in there when I was a young kid. My mum and dad. Every strip available. Um, every strip in Europe. Wouldn't oh, <coughs> oh, loved it, <laughs> loved it. But I had to, that's where I got the Napoli strip, the Maradona one. That's a good one, Tam. What about yourself? Uh, I, I like the Borussia Dortmund strip uh, with Paul Lambert was playing the Illuminous Yellow Night one. Uh, with Di, Di Continental was the was the sponsor. That was my favourite strip of all time. I, I loved that Dortmund team actually as well. That Lambert played and that was a top team. That was my favourite strip. And he's froze. Ruffy, oh, no, what about you? Back. He's back. Uh, oh, it has to be Real, Real Madrid for me. Uh, it didn't matter what team I was uh, part of. I always try to make sure that it was all white with whatever, a wee touch of red or whatever. I think all white on the part looks absolutely magnificent. Uh, I think obviously Brazil, because I've got a, got a couple of Brazil jerseys myself. Uh, they're, they're fantastic jerseys as well. Did Ruffy, did Ruffy <laughs> play in the World Cup? My favourite. <laughs> 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 My my favourite uh, my favourite strip was sort of a, along with the the Ajax strip was Monaco. Uh, I used to like the Monaco, the red with the the, the white the sort of a strip. And I have to th if I'm going to go red and white, I've got to go Peru. I really like that Peru strip. That's different class. <laughs> yeah, Just absolutely. A red, a red <clears throat> if only you'd actually <laughs> studied them before you met them. <laughs> Are we talking about our favourite old time strip here? Or the ones that just, you just 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 some no that 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 was the that was the fifty that they posted. We couldn't put them all fifty, but but you had to pick one that was just from your own point of view that was iconic. I always I always remember the boy Roberto Baggio. Remember at Fiorentina yeah. and Juventus. Yep. I always followed him about. Always get his strips. I used to love watching him play with a ponytail. Yeah, what a player! I, what a player he was. Uh, I, I, have you had any mad haircuts in your time apart from the thug one, Barry, that Tom mentioned at the start of the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Barry, I, yeah, it's getting to a stage I might be going back to that. I just <laughs> bought, a, I bought a set of uh, clippers that came in this morning, so I might be getting a... I don't oh, think I'll get a two or a three. Yeah, that was him. That, Peter, that was him. Uh, that was him. He's snarling best, wasn't it, when he just been oh. the uh, like pit bull with a skin oh. heating that, wasn't he? Oh. Honestly, he, and by the way, he, he was he was my pal then, and I still wanted to punch him because he just looked aggressive every time you met him. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> he's one of those wee faces. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else, just before just before we go, the answer to the quiz was Mo Salah. <laughs> so congratulations if you got the quiz question. Um, all I would say to you, and this is from the bottom of my heart on this one, uh, stay safe, stay indoors. If you're lucky enough to have a back garden. Just stay close with your family by your side. Do not break the rules this weekend, even if the sun is shining. And I think I speak for everyone on this programme. At Thursday at 8 o'clock, I know Barry, I know Tam, I know Ruffy, <coughs> and certainly myself. We were out there clapping, lads, for the NHS and all the carers and all the other services that are putting themselves in the front line. I'm sure I speak for all of you guys on this. Yep, yeah, that's what Peter, it's... Fantastic. Sorry, I, what, what the, the people do in the front line, putting their lives at risk. People are actually nurses and doctors. Some are dying. Um, so no, last night, me and the wife and the kids, 8 o'clock, we were out clapping. They deserve it. Concur with that? Yes, I would agree with that 100%. Can't see any better than that. We're right behind the NHS and everyone else who puts themselves in a very dangerous position uh, to try and keep uh, us all together safe and well. So, from Barry, from Tam, uh, Ruffy, and everyone who's contributed this week to the show. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant from the producer. Uh, Barry, you and I go off lightly. Look, brilliant. Look at, look at those two <laughs> space cadets. I Tom's got a better tan than them. <laughs> What's that? That, oh, that, that, is, that is Tom Versace. Brilliant. Anyway, on, on that Brilliant. note, thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend. <laughs>